So if we want to use YouTube most effectively, we have to have some kind of video. I'm going to upload the example video that we worked on last time. You could too if you'd like to, if you'd like to get the full effect of it. Uh, but in the notes here, tips on getting views on YouTube. This is a whole big idea here, but uh, optimize your titles, descriptions, and keywords. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Create a quote good thumbnail. And I'll expound on that in a moment. Organize your content into topics, which would be playlists, and be social. So I'll cover all of these. Now, um, next week, part three of the class, I'm going to cover a little bit more of YouTube plus other topics. And part three, I also plan, I mean, day, the last day of part three, I plan on it being a little bit of a recap of different things we've talked about, but I want to cover a little bit more YouTube and other concepts. And if you have further things you'd like refinement on, we can cover them next time. But these things are here to start off with. OK. I'm going to upload a video, and I've got this. Some of you have an icon that is just an up arrow. And on mine, it happens to be a little camera with a plus. But clicking on that allows me to upload a video or go live. For some people, it's just an upload button. For some, it's both. When I click Upload Video, I get a screen. Select File to Upload or drag it here and then options about its privacy. Let me mention privacy here a moment. Privacy options for videos. We have public. We have unlisted, private, and scheduled. Public. Anyone with a link or search can view your video. So if they have a link, every video has, a, has, a, has an address, a link. If they have the link, they can go back and watch your video. If they search on YouTube or Google, they could find your video and watch your video. Unlisted. Anyone with a link, but not through search, can view your video. If they have this private link that you will get for your video, they can watch it as many times as they want. And if they share that private link to more people, those people can watch it, even though you didn't expect them to. However, your video will not be findable if someone searches. <clears throat> These three options here, then, are like the phone book. If my name is in the phone book, my phone number in the, in the phone book, anyone can call me. I can pay the phone company to remove my name from the phone book, and then no one can find me in the phone book. But if my stalker still had uh, my phone number from before, they can still call it. Private. Not found through search, and only those you approve can view. So you can approve people on a case-by-case -case basis, or as a group of people who can watch my video. Usually this is used for, it's hidden, no one can see it, I have it on my account, uploaded you know, as a backup, let's say, but no one can see it that easily. And scheduled. After your deadline, video becomes public. So I can schedule. If I make a plan that once a month I'm going to upload a video, I might have created, I might have spent a weekend creating five videos, and I can schedule that they will all appear on the first day of the month automatically at 1 p.m. I can 
can schedule videos. For most of us, we'll want it to be public. We want anyone to find our videos and share our videos. I'll leave it on public, and I'm going to go borrow the video from last week. So depending on your internet connection, this may be a slow upload, or if we have had a connection like at the school here, very fast. Most of the time uh, when you have internet access at home, you have very slow upload speeds. All of these companies will tout how fast you have speeds that you pay for. Those are download speeds. Most of these companies like Cox or AT&T or whatever are selling you very fast download speeds. Upload speeds are often going to be pitifully slower. Uh, so when you've got videos that are 2 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes long, you can be waiting for a while. Um, this one got uploaded and processed very quickly. So during this process time, it was scanning it to find any instances of copyrighted music. So this is how it knows if your video is OK or not. From this screen, I get a variety of options, which I can further edit later. It scanned the video, and then it gives me options for these possible thumbnails. Uh, a shot somewhere at the beginning of my video, somewhere at the end, somewhere in the middle. Now, I've seen so many cool videos out there, such as Moto G5 Review. I've seen so many videos out there. Look at that. with the with the text right here and the little dollar symbol. That one looks like a, a screenshot. But most of these other ones are going to be over here with, you know, it's artistic and blurry and their, their text right here. And so it's getting a little cluttered, a little too much text. But these are these custom thumbnails. That one like that. There's no shot in the video of that actually looking like that. The default is, if you have not verified, you have to pick one of the random thumbnails it finds for you. Once you verify your account, you have the ability to do thumbnails. Let me jump down right here about thumbnails. I'll get back to description in a moment. You can create custom thumbnails if you verify your account. Get an idea of what a good thumbnail is by researching the competition. I'm uploading a video about a review of this Motorola G5. I did a little bit of searching to see what others are doing. Best budget phone 2017, there's the, there's the product. I'm seeing all of these thumbnails. Here's a close-up shot here, number one on Amazon. And it's a close-up there. There's another one there. So. The, most of these require some amount, then, of video or photo editing skills. I could take a photo of the product like this, but then I need Photoshop or some other software to overlay this text. So good thumbnails. You often need something like Photoshop to create a good thumbnail. You want to avoid a lot of text, especially small text. Think about a thumbnail 
being small. These thumbnails will appear in different sizes, and when I'm looking at my search results here, they're kind of big. You can tell what's in them. But when you when you look at a video, so I just and then on the right side you get more suggestions. These are smaller. That same thumbnail from before gets shrunk down. So you have to think in terms of thumbnails this size. And then when people are looking at YouTube videos on their phone, they're even smaller. So right here from a distance, who has good eyesight and can read this to me right here? Trick question. Well, you guys don't count here at the front. I meant people at the back. So the, the that text is a little too small. Plus, it's a little hard to read in terms of that white text on a green background. That's kind of hard to read. That white text on a black background is a little easier to read. This is easier to read because it's white on dark. Um, this text right here, this is this is white on white, but they've got a red. Uh, they've got a black outline. So see, there's a lot to think about. What about this over here? Moto G5 P8. Well, I can't read the rest, because in the corner will always be the time of the video. So that's a common mistake there. Now, it's not really hurting them. That has 353,000 views. But for us starting off, there's so many hidden tricks about the algorithm about why does my video get views and that one doesn't. There's just so many factors. That's why I, I list a variety of things. But one of them is trying to put your text on the bottom right of the thumbnail, because it's going to get cut off somewhere. Hard to read. Think about a thumbnail being small. Try to avoid text at bottom right. Try to avoid anything useful at bottom right. It's going to get covered up by the the time indicator. With text, try to have contrast. Black text versus white background, or vice versa. Or some, some colors that don't clash. So in my case, I have no custom thumbnail, so I'll skip that. I have the option here to further set it to public, unlisted, private, whatever. Uh, so again, if it's like on private, only you can view, but you can share. You can put people's email addresses here, and only those that are approved on the list can view the email, uh, can view the, the, the video. Scheduled, I, I set it for a time, Wednesday at um, 8 p.m. If I have Twitter connected, as soon as I uh, publish this video on YouTube, it will also tweet about it on Twitter. Now notice there's no button to also put it on Facebook. Well, Facebook and YouTube are not friends, so that's not there automatically. After we upload, then we have the ability to then send it to Facebook, but not automatically. Okay, title right here. So. Moto G5 review. That's an example of an OK, uh, a grade of a C title. Because I have all of the space to write kind of a lot. Up to a certain point, it'll say too long. But you have a lot of space. Again, looking at the examples of other people. Moto G5 review. Is it still the best budget phone? Moto G5 review. Brilliant budget blower? Motorola G5. Annalise review. G5 budget smartphone king. Motorola Moto G5 review. Best budget. I simply searched for Moto G5 review, and I'm getting a lot of results of people saying the keyword budget. That might mean I might think about using the keyword budget as well, or maybe affordable or low cost. Best low cost phone on the market. 
Moto G5 review. I have the keyword best, the keyword low cost, the name of the phone. Within the description, I can also then put budget in here or under the tags. But this requires some, some research for good titles, descriptions, and keywords. To research before uploading, search your topic or product to get a sense of words that are popular in a video. See if you can use them or variations. Instead of budget, I'm going to try low cost in the main title or affordable. When people hear budget, perhaps that has the connotation of cheap. I might not, might not want to use that. I might want to say affordable, best affordable smartphone of the year. And then elsewhere, I'll use the word budget or cheap or low cost. And then in the description, I have as much space as I want here, but this is a very powerful thing because descriptions allow you to add active links and chapters. Simply by adding one or more URLs, they will become clickable. So over here I could say, check out our full review on our site. That will become an active link, and I can have as many of those as I want. One thing that I, that I like that I recommend is you can have something like chapters And if you write a time code, these things will translate into active clickable links that will jump a person to different parts of your video. If I've got a five minute long video, and I've got a part of the video where I introduce it, talk about the prices, specifications, I can, I have to do the work myself of checking at what moment in my video do I want to jump to. This is not automatic, this is not anything special. I have to watch my own video and mark here that at one minute, one second, that'll be an active link to jump me to that point in the video. At zero minutes, 12 seconds, I introduce myself after the animation at the beginning. So these chapter stops I think could be very useful. Question? Exactly. How, how is the format when you do the chapter? Is it space dash space to get it to be an active link? Or For the chapter? Any, any format time code. time code? Well, not any formatted. It's under... It is, it's got to be... Right. Minutes and seconds. Okay. So you don't need you don't need you put up there space dash space intro. So you don't need that. You could make it just space anything, just as long as it follows the standard time code. Yeah, this is the important part. This is what will right. be active. Okay. But I'm putting here what are they going to look and, at. And you don't need to title it the chapters to make it work. I, I just mean to make it work. To make it work you don't need to title it. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. I mean, you would, you would always title it. I just yeah, that. to tell people what they're going to click on. But it's just going to be, yeah, it's, there's nothing special at all. You just okay. put a time code, okay. and that's an active link. Okay. A lot of people don't know that, and it's incredibly easy to do. And it could be very useful, especially for long videos.
Intro. I just put it this way because it's more readable. Sure. Price. I didn't know if that was part of the format to make it work. No. So, chapter stops, time code, minutes, seconds. No, no, the title at the top where he said chapters is not part of it. It's just, you just need to have the time code in that format. And it, and it, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to have any indicator. People are going to say, well, what, is the, what are those numbers? Sure. If I make it obvious by saying chapters or right. Sections. What's another term? Like when we watch a DVD, if we jump to a different chapter in the DVD, yeah, right? You could say check out these, check out these places or segments. Check yeah. out our segments. Right. Yeah, whatever way to make it obvious to the audience. Yeah. These numbers here, you can click on, and they'll go to a certain spot. Okay. Cool. <laughs> now we're having so much fun, but they stopped paying me three minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on private for the moment. And, and save it. When we come back next time, I'll keep going about this to talk about the other things about this and a little bit more YouTube stuff and then the other stuff for the last day of class. So uh, we ran out of time. I'm going to put my notes into the network folder. And if you'd like to print that, you can. And when we come back next time, we're going to continue.